stars of evening that are shining in the sky. Can you count the clouds that daily over all the world go by? God the Lord who doth not slumber keepeth all the boundless number, but he careth more for thee, but he careth more for thee. Can you count the birthly children in their little beds at night, who without a thought of sorrow rise again at morning light? God the Lord who dwells in heaven, loving care to each has given. He has not forgotten thee, he has not forgotten thee. Good morning. One of my favorite uh, lullaby. I sing it a little slower, of course. <laughs> it's a lullaby um, for my grandchildren. I mean, the children and grandchildren. But my children have way outgrown that now. Okay, so we're continuing our journey through the Bible. And today, we hear what God has to say. So we're picking up in Job 38, verse 1, when the Lord challenges Job. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. Who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorant words? Brace yourself, because I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. Do you know how its dimensions were determined? And who did the surveying? What supports its foundations? And who laid its cornerstone as the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? Who defined the boundaries of the sea as it burst forth from the womb? And as I clothed it with clouds and thick darkness, for I locked it behind barred gates, limiting its shores, I said, Thus far and no further will you come. Here your proud waves must stop. Have you ever commanded the morning to appear and caused the dawn to rise in the east? Have you ever taught the daylight to spread to the ends of the earth to bring an end to the night's wickedness? For the features of the earth take shape as the light approaches and the dawn is robed in red. The light disturbs the haunts of the wicked and it stops the arm that is raised in violence. Have you explored the springs from which the seas come? Have you walked about and explored their depths? Do you know where the gates of the death are located? Have you seen the gates of utter gloom? Do you realize the extent of the earth? Tell me about it if you know. Where does the light come from? And where does the darkness go? Can you take it to its home? Do you know how to get there? But of course you know all this, for you were born before it was all created. And you are so very experienced. Have you visited the treasuries of the snow? Have you seen where the hail is made and stored? I have reserved it for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war. Where is the path to the origin of light? Where is the home of the east wind? Who created a channel for the torrents of rain? Who laid out the path for the light thing? Who makes the rain fall on barren land? in a desert where no one lives? Who sends the rain that satisfies the parched ground and makes the tender grass spring up? Does the rain have a father? Where does the dew come from? Who is the mother of the ice? Who gives birth to the frost from the heavens? For the water turns to ice as hard as rock, and the surface of the water freezes. Can you hold back the movements of the stars? Are you able to restrain the Pleiades and the Orion? Can you ensure the proper sequence of the seasons or guide the constellation of the bear with her cubs across the heavens? Do you know the laws of the universe and how God rules the earth? Can you shout to the clouds and make it rain? Can you make lightning appear and cause it to strike as you direct it? Who gives intuition and instinct? Who is wise enough to count all the clouds? Who can tilt the water jars of heaven, turning the dry dust to clumps of mud? 
Can you stalk prey for a lioness and satisfy the young lion's appetites as they lie in their dens or craft in the thicket? Who provides food for the ravens when their young cry when their young cry out to God as they wander about in hunger? The Lord's challenge continues, beginning in Job thirty nine one. Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Have you watched as the wild deer are born? Do you know how many months they carry their young? Are you aware of the time of their delivery? They crouch down to give birth to their young and deliver their offspring. Their young grow up in the open fields, then leave their parents and never return. Who makes the wild donkey wild? I have placed it in the wilderness. Its home is at the wasteland. It hates the noise of the city, and it has no driver to shout at it. The mountains are its pasture land, where it searches for every blade of grass. Will the wild ox consent to be tamed? Will it stay in your stall? Can you hitch a wild ox to a plow? Will it plow a field for you? Since it is so strong, can you trust it? Can you go away and trust the ox to do your work? Can you rely on it to return, bringing your grain to the threshing floor? The ostrich flaps her wings grandly, but they are no match for the feathers of the stork. She lays her eggs on top of the earth, letting them be warmed in the dust. She doesn't worry that a foot might crush them or that wild animals might destroy them. She is harsh toward her young, as if they were not her own. She is unconcerned though they die, for God has deprived her of wisdom. He has given her no understanding. But whenever she jumps up to run, she passes the swiftest horse with its rider. Have you given the horse its strength? or clothed its neck with a flowing mane? Did you give it the ability to leap forward like a locust? Its majestic snorting is something to hear. It paws the earth and rejoices in its strength. When it charges to war, it is unafraid. It does not run from the sword. The arrows rattle against it, and the spear and javelin flash. Fiercely it paws the ground and rushes forward into battle when the trumpet blows. It snorts at the sound of the bugle. It senses the battle even at a distance. It quivers at the noise of battle and at the shout of the captain's commands. Are you the one who makes the hawk soar and spread its wings to the south? Is it at your command that the eagle rises to the heights to make its nest? It lives on the cliffs, making its home on a distant rocky crag. From there it hunts its prey, keeping watch with piercing eyes. Its nestlings gulp down blood for it feeds on the carcass of the slaughtered. Then the Lord said to Job, Do you still want to argue with the Almighty? You are God's critic, but do you have the answers? Job responds to the Lord, beginning in Job 40, verse 3. And Job replied to the Lord, I am nothing. How could I ever find the answers? I will put my hand over my mouth in silence. I have said too much already. I have nothing more to say. So that's all for today. We hear more from God tomorrow. So let's turn to our closing hymn this morning for the beauty of the earth as we consider the beauty of God's creation and his testimony about his own creation. Take a deep breath and sing along with me. Beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the heart of which from our birth, over and around us lies. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise. For the church of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. Lord of all, to thee we raise 
This our heaven finds of praise For thy church that evermore Lifteth holy hands above Offering upon every shore Her pure sacrifice of love Lord of all to thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise. Sorry, sometimes they have a different verse in there, don't they? Good morning, Mom. Good morning, Troy, and happy birthday. Good morning, Anne and Katie and Kara. Good morning, Beth and Winston and Sophie. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Jim and Peggy. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, Patty. Let's see. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Mary Nell. Good morning, Rhonda. Good morning, Janie. Hope everybody has a wonderful day and hope you'll come back to hear the rest of what the Lord has to say tomorrow.